All right, so we're gonna do an EP bait fish fly. Uh, I've looked through YouTube a handful of times looking for videos on how to tie this fly for people that wanted to know how, and uh, every one of them that I found was garbage. So I'm gonna do one myself. Uh, the hook that we're using is a 2.0 Gamakatsu SC15. Um, I like a wide gap hook, which is what this is, with a relatively short shank to tie this fly. If you're going to throw the fly to big tarpon or really large snook, you need to use a larger hook than this, something with a heavier wire. Uh, they make a, a, a two times hardened or a three times hardened version of this hook that would work out really well. Uh, also, um, like a, a 1.0 or a number one 600 SP by Tiemco would work out pretty well also. But for redfish, sea trout, typical size, you know, 10 pound and under snook and little baby tarpon, this is a really good hook to use for this fly. Um, I'm going to do this one in kind of a mullet type color. Uh, I'm going to use EP Polar Bear for the belly color. It's kind of a off white. Pearl white would work just fine. Uh, I've just kind of fallen in love with this particular color. And then for the top of it, you could use whatever you want. I like to use the EP Tarpon Streamer. It's kind of a, it's a 3D fiber, so it's blended colors. Uh, kind of a olive -y, browny, grayish, uh, muck-like type of color that I think kind of matches a, a mullet's back pretty well. Uh, if you're fishing really clear water and you want to do a mullet color, probably use gray or something like that for the top and white for the belly. But for dirty water, I think that makes a pretty good color. So, to start it off, I usually use white thread or some sort of thread to match the color of either the top or the bottom of the fly. doesn't matter which one you want to match. I typically match the belly, so white works out pretty well. First thing you're going to do is I put down a base layer of thread the whole way down the shank of the hook on this fly. I do that so that way when I go and put adhesive on, it helps to bind this hook all the fibers and everything down onto the hook. Now I'm not going to use adhesive as I go on this one so that I don't drop any on the camera because it's not my camera, it's my friends. Uh, but I'll say adhesive every time that you should use adhesive. Uh, I like to use Backcountry Laboratories Hard as Hull. Uh, they are not paying me to say that, that's just my favorite head cement. Uh, any other standard head cement would work pretty well for this. I do not like epoxy for that job and I also do not like super glue. Epoxy takes too long and is a bit excessive and heavy. Super glue is too volatile to work with. Standard head cement, hard as hull or hard as nails if you're going to go that route. Um, I'm going to start with a top piece. You can start with a bottom piece, it doesn't matter. Um, I do this in sections. There's a tail section, a body section, and a head section to this fly. And it's two and two, top and bottom, the whole way down. So we're going to take the first piece for the, for the top. I'm going to set it right up on top of the hook, about halfway into the length of the material. Now I've cut this material down to size some, but I usually use a full length piece when I do the tail piece. And I'm going to tie this down, and I start it towards the rear of where I want it to actually sit get it situated on there and then wrap forward about four or five wraps. Don't do too many wraps when you're tying this fly or any other fly for that matter. If you have a rotary vise, turn it over. If you don't, uh, well if you don't have a rotary vise, go out and buy one because uh, you really should have one. Take the white, so this is what we're going to use on the bottom. We're going to set that into place, kind of parting it around the hook like so. It doesn't have to be quite perfect, but you want to get it fairly close. Set it on there and slip that around the hook like so. There you go. And now I'm going to wrap this down. And when I wrap this down, I'm wrapping back away from the eye of the hook towards the point of the hook. So the first piece that I wrapped on, I went from the point towards the eye. This time I go from the eye to towards the point. The reason I do that is now when I turn this fly over and I fold back the top and I fold back the bottom, which you have to kind of get to part around the hook there. There we go. Now my thread is already behind the last place that I placed it. That way when I go to wrap, boom, it just binds the fiber down. Simple as that. Nothing else needs to be done. Wrap forward just a little bit, not all the way, but just a couple of wraps like so. And we're going to go on to the next piece, also going to go on the top and then on to the bottom. We're still working into the tail portion of this fly. So set it on there, make your wrap from the back going forward to the eye. Came off that first bump. Set that on there. Bingo. Flip her over. Grab another piece. 
for the belly. Situate that around the point of the hook. Put that on there, like so. And wrap. And this time we're going from the eye back towards the point. And I'm gonna wrap back to about where the bump was from the last piece that I tied in. I'm always working forward as I tie this fly. Take my top piece, fold it back, bottom piece, part around the hook, fold it back, and capture. A couple wraps like so. And that completes the tail portion of the fly. Now from here, a little drop of adhesive. Using some adhesive, some head cement as you go, ensures that this fly stays really strong. It doesn't want to come apart and unravel as you go. As you can see, you're not putting down a whole lot of wraps of thread as you tie this one in. And you do that so you don't build up this big, ugly thread body in there. But you still need the fly to be durable. So that's why I do the adhesive. Now for the body portion, I have smaller pieces here. All right, and, and also I want you to notice for the tail, the body, all of it, look at how little of this stuff I'm using. All right, every single awful EP fly that I've ever tied, and I tied a whole bunch of these that turned out really, really bad when I first started tying. The, the problem is you use too much fiber. Take as much fiber as you think you should use, and you should use very little, and then pull that off, and then cut that in half. And then if it still doesn't look as scarce as this, cut it in half again. Every time that I've sat down with somebody and showed them how to tie one of these flies, they're like, you only use that much? Yes, I only use that much. That's it. So this is half of a standard length. I've cut it in half so I, I can use one piece so it's all the same thickness and then I get two pieces out of it. Now for the body portion of this, I'm going to take this and wrap it around the shank of the hook in two parts, kind of like a V, and hold it up like so. Wrap the thread around that, coming back, just like so. Flip her over, I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom. And I'm gonna do that two times each. Here's the second piece, white, or polar bear actually. Double it over, hold it up, couple wraps, don't go crazy. Uh, also, using adhesive at that step before helps your thread to walk back up that piece of material because it doesn't really want to do that usually. Uh, it happened to work out pretty well for me right there. Uh, but I'm surprised that it didn't without using adhesive. So that was a top and a bottom for that body piece. And now I'm going to do my second top for the body portion. One, two, three, four. Eh, let me get one more in there. There we go, that was more than one, whatever. Flip her over, do the bottom again. Wrap that on. There we go. Flip it back over, part that around the hook. Now we have the body. The first two pieces, top and bottom, were the tail. The second subsequent top and bottom pieces were uh, for the body. Now we're going to do the head. The head pieces are very short. What I have here, they're, you know, two and a half, maybe three inches long altogether. I cut these off of the ends of the tail pieces that I was going to use. Since I wanted those to be fairly long and for my head pieces I want them to be really short, it works out pretty well. So, just like we did on the tail, I'm going to set my first head piece on. I'm going to wrap from the hook point coming forward to the eye. Two, three wraps, don't go crazy. Uh, probably actually in the case of this one wanted one or two more wraps to the rear. Set that on there. Yeah, it looks about right. I don't want too big of a gap right there. I'm come back up to the front, flip it over, take the white for the bottom of my head and wrap that on and come back just a couple of wraps. Turn it up, pull them back, and wrap it down. Now for the head pieces, I don't want to really wrap them so they lay down flat. I just want to put one, maybe two wraps on there, that's it. I want them to kind of remain standing up because that's going to build the head portion of the fly. So I wrap forward of where I put that last little chunk right there, um, and then come back in and do the final piece for the head of the fly. Set it in. One, couple wraps going forward, 
just like so. Flip it over. A couple of wraps. Once you set that on, getting ahead of myself, wrapping back. I'm over the top of it like so. You can always take your material, which will shimmy around on the, uh, the shank of the hook and reposition it where you really want it. So, pull it back, pull it back, one wrap over it, and then we're gonna finish. I'm gonna come off of that clump right there, and I'm gonna put just the teeniest, tiniest little nose. You don't want your flies to have a beak, okay, unless you're tying ballyhoo flies, but we're not. So, you notice with proper shank control, eh, shank control, anywho, uh, we finish right up at the front by the eye of the hook, and we're gonna total this off uh, with a whip finish. One, two, three. Plunk, right into place, cut it off. Normally I would take and go across where I have open thread here and take a bodkin with a little bit of head cement in it and stick that bodkin ever so slightly down into those pieces of thread on both sides to make sure that the adhesive really gets down into it and that it's not gonna come out. Um, now we have to trim the fly. This is where tying the fly onto the hook is, is the first part of it. Uh, you could have screwed it up a number of times as you went through this. Now you have stuff that you can't undo if you screw up because we're gonna take a pair of scissors to this. So we're gonna pop it out of the vise. We're also going to reposition the camera and then we're going to trim this thing, all right? All right, so now we're going to trim the fly. You're going to notice as I'm trimming this, I tend to every now and then just take it and shake it and that kind of helps to flare the fibers out. You don't want to pull them straight out and hold it while you trim. That always tends to end up badly, but I will take and kind of fluff them out and then I'll go in and trim. So what I usually do is I start off and I do like to use scissors that are curved for this. That way you don't actually bury the tip into there and, and cut out something you didn't mean to. Usually what I'll do is I'll take this and I'll start off by just kind of squaring the whole thing out. Remember when you're trimming, cut away less and then come back. You can always cut more away. You can't add it on after you cut that shit off. So we'll kind of trim this into kind of a squared, rounded off kind of shape even though squared and rounded off are two totally different things. I, I think you understand what I'm saying. Um, to start. So trim that out like so. Just like that. So now that I've kind of evened this out some and it's kind of in a rough bait fish profile, I'm going to give it another shake. Now we're going to start getting down to the nitty gritty on this. I try not to do too much from one side at a single time. I usually do a little bit off the top and then I'll flip it over and I'll do a little bit on the bottom. That way you don't wind up with, oh no, I trimmed the top so short that I have to trim the, the bottom the same equal distance and you have too small or a weird looking fly. So, I'm gonna trim this around here. Hopefully we can do this trim job. I trim the tail on this thing quite to a point kind of blunt it off a little bit, but not by a huge, huge amount. Now on the underside, when I go to trim, it gets tricky working around the hook. And I do want the bottom of the hook to be ever so slightly exposed when I go to trim. I'm going to try and keep my head out of the shot so you can actually see what I'm doing as I go, but I'm not sure how well that's going to work. it up a little bit more but that's roughly the shape right there once it gets in the water all that's going to pearl fall down and it's going to have the right kind of shape so if you have extra fuzz and fluff it's really not the end of the world uh, i tend to try and clear out of it some of it out as best as i can just because i want the fly to look as pretty as possible so now we're going to put the fly back into the vise and we're going to put eyes on it all right so now we're going to put the eyes on and put the fly back in the vise uh, i use 3d eyes uh, no flat eyes they're uh, cheap and lame and 
Uh, nobody likes that sort of thing. Uh, I get this big huge card off a guy on eBay for about $10 from China. As long as you have a month or so to wait for your eyes to come in, this is the way to do it. Otherwise, uh, spend $6 for five of them at a fly shop. Now, what we're going to do from here, I use Zappagap Goo. All right, this is uh, you know the same company that makes the regular Zappagap super glue, but the goo is really, really thick. Well, goo. Uh, and I also use a bodkin to do this part of the job. I did not come up with this little method of doing it. Uh, it was actually showed to me by a friend of mine. What I'm gonna do is I take the cap, the applicator cap off, so I just have the tip in of this stuff right here, and I wanna squeeze out just the tiniest little bit of it. Not a whole, whole lot, but just a little bit. And I'm gonna get a dollop of that right on the tip of that bodkin there. Now I'm gonna take one of my eyes, which I have right here, and I'm gonna stick it onto that glue on the bodkin. Then I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna place that eye where I want it, and that's just a hair behind the nose of this thing. I'm gonna put my thumb down, and I'm gonna snatch that bodkin out of place. By doing that, I pin the glue down without making a big, huge mess, and I can get that eye pretty much where I want it. Just give it a little tap a and it'll stay right on in place. Flip the fly over, and repeat. All right, so we put the eyes on both sides, front and back. You can usually look down the middle of the fly, and that'll give you kind of a rough idea if I get the camera to focus on it, it doesn't really want to, but make sure your eyes are relatively even. They don't have to be perfectly even. In fact, them being ever so slightly off center gives the fly a little bit of extra action overall. So, there is our more or less finished product. If you wanted to put a little red gill spot on it, you could do that with a red Sharpie after the fact. Uh, I do like to use Sharpie when I'm marking onto EP fiber. Take your red Sharpie, set the fly down on something. This happens to be the back of my checkbook. Uh, who writes checks in this day and age? Nobody. Uh, so I just use it for this. Set it down. I always like to, when I make my marks, I always like to set it down on something rather than trying to do it on the vise. You get better control that way. And I'm just going to press the Sharpie down into the material and just make a little half moon with it on one side. Flip it over. Do the other side by pressing like so. And then Comb it out. Does it look right? Does it look like a bait fish? Yes. If I was a fish, I would eat that and I would be dead too. Thank you for watching my video. Um, uh, please continue to buy flies for me, but if you must tie your own, this is how I do it. Thank you.